Hi friends, uh, so let's get started talking about quality factor. Now, you may have heard about this particular word in electrical engineering in maybe in your pre-university. So, uh, here also we will make use of this particular quantity known as quality factor or it is also called as Q factor. So, I may also write that it is also known as Q factor. Now, what is it? What is this all about? Now, quality factor hmm, is defined when, uh, let's say I'm having a very light damped system, light damped systems. That means, as the word indicates, the amount of damping present in the system is not that much. Maybe zeta value will be less than, let's say, 0 0.05. Cases like this. In these cases, we can actually find out what will be the maximum value of our uh, um, amp amplitude or maximum value of our magnification factor. Let's try and go ahead and do that. Now, as shown here, let's say, let's say for zeta equal to 0 0.10 0 0.10 okay we need to calculate the maximum let's say the maximum is here isn't it this is the zeta equal to 1.1 um, one curve and this is the point where magnitude of g of i omega or the magnification factor assumes a maximum value so what will be this value as per the equation so maximum of g of i omega max if i write it it will be 1 divided by 2 zeta divided by root of 1 minus zeta square now we here we are talking about light damp systems where zeta is very small so this term will be 1 so effectively we will end up with g of i max is equal to what we will get it will be 1 divided by 2 zeta so this is known as the quality factor or the q factor of a particular mechanical system now naturally this question should come to your mind if you are thinking properly why we need q factor i missed a question mark here so this is yet another technique to calculate the viscous damping coefficient or the viscous damping factor zeta in the system i think five or three lectures back we already talked about a method called logarithmic decrement in which we were able to compute both c and zeta using a different technique so using the q factor definition as well we can compute these two quantities c and zeta let's see how we can do that so in the previous lecture i told you q factor is defined as 1 by 2 zeta and this is the modulus of frequency response the maximum value of frequency response now what we will do is we will run an experiment we will excite the system at different frequencies and then we will calculate let's say i will compute my mode of g of i omega magnitude of the frequency response with respect to omega by omega n let's say then i'll get a plot something like this then if i know the maximum value maximum value of this function then this is my q so you run an experiment first then you plot this kind of a curve then calculate the q factor then from q factor we can compute zeta now let's talk about half power points half power points this technique can be also utilized 
to calculate the amount of viscous damping present in the system so the whole concept goes like this so here is a typical response curve which i have shown so this this always remember one thing the curve should always start from here it is not it should not start from here the whole concept is when omega equal to 0 that does that actually corresponds to a case where you are applying a static load then we will always have a deflection which will be equal to my static deflection so that means my modulus of g of i omega or the amplification factor or the magnification factor should be 1 so this curve will always start from 1 always remember this because in interviews they ask you to draw this and you draw a curve you will capture the nature and everything but you forget to start the curve from here or you mistakenly if you start the curve from here then you have, may have to face more questions because it is wrong especially for PSUs or if you are attending ISRO interviews and all ISRO bark interviews so if you are not from India these, these are public sector companies or research organizations in India basically now uh, let's come back to where we left off so we were talking about half power methods so here we have maximum um, value of g of i omega which is q then why there are two points are represented as p1 and p2 where the amplitude reduces to q divided by root 2 the, what that effectively means the power dissipated in a damper is directly proportional to the square of the amplitude square of the amplitude we will prove this when we will talk about structural damping but for the time being let's think let's take it like the power dissipated in the uh, in the damper will be directly proportional to the square of the amplitude now if that is the case then obviously half power points are those points where the amplitude will be q by root 2 now we need to compute at what are these values omega 1 and omega 2 or if you want to be precise let's say this is omega 1 by omega n omega 2 by omega n because i represented my x axis coordinate is omega by n omega by omega n now if we want to compute omega 1 by omega n and omega 2 by omega n we should substitute in the formula for g of i omega as shown here so once we plug it plug this here and solve for omega 1 and omega 2 i'm not going to do the math again so it's pretty straightforward if you know the high school algebra then you are well off so once you do all your algebra correctly then what you will end up is q will be your q will be your omega n which is your natural frequency divided by omega 2 minus omega 1 this is also known as omega n divided by delta w few things to note here this delta w is also known as the bandwidth of the system so if you have a very small bandwidth then your quality factor is so high this is similar to what we hear in a radio circuit or in, a, in an electrical circuit so the other point is these omega 2 and omega 1 can be thought of as omega 1 will be omega n minus delta w and omega 2 will be omega n plus delta w so they are equally spaced about the point where omega is equal to omega n or over omega by omega n is 1 so they are equally spaced or they are symmetric about the point where r is equal to 1 so if you know your half power points if you know your half power points like then you you effectively know your omega 2 and omega 1 you can compute the bandwidth you know the natural frequency of the system then you can calculate the quality factor or the q factor then you can back compute the amount of damping present in the system thanks for watching